I've spent a bit of time prototyping a virtual reality construction tool where you can actually build with building blocks in virtual reality space. I started to look at it on the Google Cardboard platform. The main reason being that that's the only VR platform that I actually have access to at the moment, but also because I was really interested in how the Google Cardboard platform really has two basic inputs. It's got like the rotation of your head and it's also got that one trigger button on the top of the headset. And I wanted to see if I could build a sort of virtual reality building experience that was fun to use, straightforward to use, that existed within that user interface constraint. Okay, so this is the environment that I've built. Basically, it's I guess it's kind of like a floating island in a void, and the island itself is a grid into which you can build. So again, I wanted the process of constructing to be as straightforward as possible. So to conjure a new block or to put something into the space or manipulate the space, the first thing you do is just pull the trigger to bring up the menu. And from this menu, you can choose the main things that you might wanna do, such as build or walk around or select an existing block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a new block now by choosing build. And you can see uh, the way that it works is it conjures <laughs> kind of magically a new block out of nowhere and it just sort of pops it in front of your view. And then what you can do is you can look around to change the width of that block and look up and down to change the height of that block. So just say I wanted to make a block that looked like that. All I have to do is click the trigger and then I can place that block into the space onto the grid. So I'll just pop that block here. The next thing it lets you do is look up and down to place the block vertically. And once you've made a decision there, you can just look around to rotate the block. So all of these build actions are just tied to clicking the trigger and rotating your head. So that'll do. Now I'm just gonna build another block. Maybe I'll pop this one here, for example. And you can see when I bring up the menu, it places the last action that you did right in the center of the menu. This is because I didn't want repetitive tasks to be a real chore. I didn't want you to have to kind of click on the button, then look around, choose the build thing again, then do it again and again and again. I just wanted whatever you did to be right there, right under the trigger when you push the button. So it's almost like, a, I guess, in old school parlance, like a double click because you just click once, then click again to repeat that last action. So say I want to pop this block here, just like that. Um, yeah, so once I've got a few blocks into the space, maybe I'll do another one just for the fun of it. It is really fun making blocks this way, kind of like having the power to just like pull a block out of nowhere. So I'll place this one here. Okay, so now I've got a few blocks in my space. You can always go back to a block that you've already created and select it and manipulate it, do whatever you might like to it. So say I wanted to select uh, this red block here, didn't like the way it was rotated. All I have to do is select it, choose rotate, and then I can just rotate it to wherever I would like it to be, like that. Or I could grab it again and just move it around on the grid again. Or if I decided that this red block really offended me, I could just destroy it, just like that. So it's really fun kind of having this power over the blocks and being able to move them and position them in this three-dimensional space. Okay, so once I've built a few blocks or I've got a space or, you know, even when it's empty, I can walk around to get like a different perspective on the world that I'm in. The way that works uh, is you just select walk here and you look anywhere on the grid and you can select uh, where you would like to go to. So for example, I can walk up here and get a sort of a closer perspective on this kind of temple gate thing that I hastily threw together before. Or I could choose to walk elsewhere on the grid, say move back here, get a little bit of a more distant view of these objects. Or if I wanted to, I could even just go like way far away, way over here and look back across the grid like that. Originally when I built this feature, I actually had it like animate towards your destination, 
but that turned out to be a, <laughs> a truly nauseating experience. So what I ended up going with was this kind of uh, blink action to mask the movement. A lot of people have been talking about the blink recently in VR and it works really well. You can kind of get this real sense of like motion. You can sort of quickly scoot around the thing that you're working on without getting disoriented. And it really, really adds to this feeling that you're actually in the space that you're working on, which is really, really awesome uh, thing to have. So I'm very happy with that feature. There's also this kind of experimental feature that I've got in here, which might turn out to actually be <laughs> maybe the most interesting thing that's in the whole project. And what that is, is basically it's this option where instead of building with a building block, uh, you can actually build with the terrain itself. So instead of like conjuring a block like this and placing it in the terrain like you've seen me do already, what you can do is you can grab hold of the grid and sculpt it into its own kind of thing. Uh, and it's really beautiful. So basically it works like this. I can just choose any one of these uh, squares that make up the grid. Just say I chose this one and I can just drag it upwards or downwards to kind of, yeah, again, sculpt the area around me. It's, it's quite cool. Uh, and I feel like there's more to this. There's definitely something that could come of this and I'm gonna keep exploring this part of the project, perhaps over the other parts, I'm not sure, because it is, uh, it's really interesting to me. This has been a really valuable process for me. I've learned a lot. Uh, and even like, you know, if I don't take this prototype to the next level or if I do or whatever, I've built like a library of scripts and assets and things that I've written that are, will really help me in prototyping virtual reality in the future. This for me was the first thing I've ever done in virtual reality. So I really just wanted to get into it and learn it and learn the basics and get a feel for this 3D space. And it's been so valuable in that way. I've been really interested in prototyping, actually building in this way uh, in a virtual reality, three-dimensional space, because obviously we as humans are three-dimensional beings. And up until now, all of the 3D stuff that we've been making digitally, or most of it, has been in a two-dimensional space as trying to emulate a three-dimensional space. And it just makes so much more sense to me that we make three-dimensional things in the three-dimensional world, just like we relate to the objects and people around us in a three-dimensional way, shouldn't we be able to relate to the digital things that we create in a three-dimensional way? And to be honest, you know, I don't, I don't have the answer, maybe one day, uh, about what that way of building things might be. At the moment, VR seems to make a lot of sense, but who knows, you know, it really could, really could change. It could be, I, I don't even know. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit my website, www.maxpiantoni.com. I've got a bunch of other projects that I've worked on so far, and I'm gonna obviously continue to make new things and keep talking about them. So it, yeah, if you're interested in this video, I'd recommend you check out my other videos, check out my other projects and get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. But yeah, thanks for watching.